nothing to these people in this territory. That's the value of commodities. A human life is not. In fact, a dead person is more valuable to them than a live person because it's like a trophy. Anthony Phil grew up in this area over here. He grew up in the Scott Projects also, which is off of uh, Northwest 22nd Avenue. Around Christmas time, 96, I ran into him at a little show going up there at Miami Night Studio 183. And uh, he came through there with a little John Doe set, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, well, they say, I don't know, it's the end of all John Doe movies. It was a beautiful holiday weekend, Christmas. And we had four execution-style gangland murders uh, in a row within a two-day period. Really, the blood got bad. Really, really about, you know, it was some beef. I hate to say it, but it really was about, you know, over some whole shit, you know what I'm saying? Bo had a little hoe. He was vibing at the time. And uh, one of them niggas from that set, you know, tried to little hoe, slapped the little hoe or something. Bo took that person like, you know, nigga, know that's my hoe. Gonna slap the hoe, I know that's my hoe. So, you know, he went off or whatever and ran down on the nigga with his little homie, young nigga named Ken Wong. And, uh, you know, both slapped him whatever with the pistol and Ken Wong is laid on and, you know, gave him business. According to police, Robinson was killed in retaliation to a rival gang murder that took place less than 12 hours earlier, also in Liberty City. 20-year-old Billy D. Walker was shot and killed while sitting in his car. Walker was killed in retaliation for the Christmas night murder of 30-year-old rival gang member Mark Couch. This graphic surveillance video shows the brutal and deliberate shooting, but Couch's murder was merely retaliation for yet another murder. 15-year-old Jarvis Hilbert shot down earlier on Christmas Day. Hilbert's life taken because of this horrific murder on August 30th. 26-year-old Angel Bennett Wilson. Police say Wilson was the girlfriend of this man, Anthony Dewan Fail, who was a big shot with the John Doe gang, but left to start a gang of his own. Cops want him because they say his actions started the bloodshed. John Doe felt like dudes and they circled. So regardless of who you is, you know, you done tried our set, you know what I'm saying? So that's, the beef went to, you know, went to going tit and tat at that point. You know, the little beef popped off, but went to, you know, pressing the niggas or whatever, trying to get the niggas who was supposed to be the shoes on Kim Wong. And in the process, you know, Angel got killed, you know what I'm saying? They had him pent down somewhere over this nigga house. Angel came through school. Shook the niggas, let Bo out, and fired off. And when they ran back down on the car, Bo had done got out. So, you know, they, they in their feelings because he done got away and they had him. So they weren't going to let that be an escape route no more. So they went on and did it to Angel. You know, that's why I got this tattoo of the Angel. It ain't that good. It's a prison tag. You know, I just got out of here. Try not to panic so much by every five seconds in your shots of fire, shots of fire. It's going to go on. We know it's going to happen. We're going to be celebrating in a way that they they don't celebrate. We're going to be shooting. You know it's going to happen a lot. So don't get into the habit every 10 seconds. Shots of fire. It's coming from the area. 10 blocks that way. 10 blocks that way. If you do that, it's going to happen here all night long. But this New Year's Eve could be even more dangerous because of Anthony Fail and all the gang violence directed tonight at the police. They are going to set up lots of rooftop snipers against the police. We got another call stating that they were going to use grenades against the police. You know the 30, get your officers in. My philosophy's been when I was a sergeant, I get all my guys in. We need somewhere, we're inside. We're not out there, no 30 to twist. We're not. Okay, what's going on? It's a scary time, not only for the community, but for the police department as well. In fact, there were uh, multiple death threats on police officers' lives. Uh, particularly during, like, uh, holidays, New Year's Eve, when you have shooting anyway. Instead of firefighters, people will sometimes use guns. And we had intelligence on New Year's Eve, uh, as 98 turned to 99, that uh, people were going to be up on rooftops with sniper rifles, shooting cops as they drove through, and throwing grenades. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen, but uh, that was one of the things we were concerned about. This particular death threat during the John Doe days really uh, shook the police department. They took it very, very seriously, and they wanted to put a bodyguard on me around the clock and my home. I asked them not to. I said, I just want to go on and live my life. This just shows I'm doing my job well. And uh, I, th I think that even though these guys may be uh, cold blood killers, they're not crazy to try to kill a cop. Meanwhile, up to 35 officers carrying their own high-powered weapons continue to scrutinize the northwest part of Miami, pursuing 
every lead about every major drug dealer that comes in. And they have been warned that a mystery caller has threatened that the John Doe drug gang will retaliate against them with sniper fire from rooftops. That's obviously happy. He's there now. There's a shabby green back up in the yard. It's running. Beijing Brown House. He's wearing all black. What color is this? Good stuff. More than 400 calls to Crime Stoppers about Anthony Fail and his former gang, the John Doe Boys. The police task force following every viable tip. There's everywhere off the street. Uh, and however we have to do that, the public turns him in, that's fine, if he turns himself in. Something Miami's most wanted is not likely to do. Yeah, man, it got so crazy in the city where it was that the crackers started not to put in poles down where you couldn't even come on season one. You can't even come on, come off season second. The gold season one, all that shit would fly out in the daytime. Alex Pinellas was in office. His ass was out there with a bulletproof vest on. You know what I'm saying? The little bro, he can't give a fuck. Basically, like, you know what I'm saying? He like, man, these guys are gonna see, they gotta take me dead alive, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he wasn't with the, the crazy, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't with that hoe, giving up easy, nigga. I mean, coming to get me, come on. Every day, they give me 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and you'll be on the one. You'll be at the store, nigga. Shootouts. Straight up. Choppers. SK, niggas whacking at each other. It's just too crazy out there. They take the advice they got at roll call and come in for cover just before midnight. The uh, state attorney's office was involved in the, in the uh, drug fight with us. There was definitely drug fight going on. We saw young people, juveniles, get into violence in a degree that we had never witnessed before. What we did is there was there was a a task force that was put together to address this issue because uh, these weren't users. These were just very violent criminals. We have a special team of dedicated agents with a supervisor that will come into that town at the request of the sheriff and, or the chief with direction from the sheriff and the chief and work that particular area, working violent crime, uh, working um, uh, standards of living issues in the community, and look to eradicate problems for the chief. Uh, usually they'll last three or four months. We go in, we do the job for the chief, and we come out. Eventually that's how everything got knocked down. Everything got closed up by the feds. No, really the local police, the feds came and put everybody in jail. Cops cracking down in Liberty City after they link more than 20 murders there to drug gang warfare. This indictment connects the John Doe's to six murders, mostly rival gang members, or John Doe's who left the gang. But one murder centers around this man, the alleged leader of the John Doe's, Corey Smith. Agents say Smith's gang killed a woman to protect him. The woman was set to testify against Smith in a murder trial. Two days before that could happen, she turned up dead. These are some of the profile sheets that we've put together on some of the members. While Phil was behind bars, a gang called the John John Doe's took over the streets of Liberty City. The members, especially leader Corey Smith, were Fail's childhood friends. Miami detective Frank Alfonso says the John Doe's are one of the best opportunities going around here, despite the job hazards. I will point out to uh, murders in the area um, that happen within the immediate area that they control. The career that these drug dealers choose usually always leads to two things in their, in their lives. And one is death and the other is jail. And they're aware of that. They're, they're very, very aware of that level and, you know, what they, they, their expectations are. But they choose to live that great life, as they call it. Miami police spokesman Lieutenant Bill Schwartz says his department hasn't seen a criminal as ruthless as Anthony Fail in a long time. Well, as you can see, uh, this is the rap sheet of Anthony Fail. It goes all the way to the ground here, all the way to the floor. A murder in the first degree, firearm possession, armed robbery, uh, homicide, willful intent to kill. I guess the last line here 